us the world what we into. I could give you head if we get sentimental. No, I will keep- hey everyone, welcome to the newest episode of On That Note with Parker Whirling. Today's guest is an indie pop singer, songwriter, producer based out of Los Angeles, California. His debut EP, Erez, is out right now. You can go stream it on Spotify and Apple Music. I'm so excited to talk to him. Please welcome Sally Boy. What's good? Yo, what's up, man? How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, dude. So, Sally Boy, you have your your Erez EP dropping tomorrow. When this episode airs, it will be already out. But right now, we're getting the Sally Boy the day before his debut EP. Yes, sir. Very exciting. What are your thoughts? Out. Oh, yeah, it comes out tonight at uh, well 9 p.m. my time, so Pacific time. Um, I mean, I'm excited. It's been like I've been working on this for a long ass time. Like, I started writing it like two years ago. I started like recording it like one and a half years ago. So, I'm just excited to you know get it out there and finally, hopefully, like have. Well, I will have. I'm looking forward to having people actually be able to have it for the first time in like what I've worked for for whatever for forever. So, which song was the first one you wrote in this entire uh, EP? was sally boy oh perfect that yeah. makes sense so the very first song that maybe the very first song i ever wrote for myself alone was sally boy gotcha so when you wrote that was there a feeling of like if this is gonna be like if sorry let me explain this when i first when i wrote my first song i ever recorded mm-hmm. uh i had a feeling of like or the first one i ever released it felt like okay i'm actually proud of this this makes sense mm-hmm. and and it's like the starting point of the rest of your yeah. journey. Did Sally Boy kind of feel like that at all? Um, so I was in a, so let me just put it, I'll start with a little bit of a backstory before I get into like my actual answer. But I was in a band for a really long time. Um, and so like I wrote a lot of, of, of music and released a lot of music with them. So I'd had like that experience of like releasing music and stuff like that. I think when I first released Sally Boy, it took me like some time to fully realize like that this was a new type of like experience for me. And it was a new type of um, emotion to release something like that and uh, solely by myself and underneath only me. So um, I think it wasn't like right away. I, I wasn't in that mindset of like, yeah, like this is like, this is it. Like, this is like amazing for me. It took me a second to be like, okay, like this is different from when I've released music in the past. Like this is a new type of like legitimacy you know? So it was, it was a a, a gradually, I guess, got to that feeling, but, but I was a little bit, um, numbed, maybe disillusioned from past releases with a band. Gotcha. Yeah. It's more personal to you because Mm -hmm. it's your own story. It's your own melodies. It's your own everything. Were there any doubts that you had throughout the process of writing, recording the CP, doing the videos, and if so, uh, how did you overcome those doubts? Um, I mean, just being an artist, at least in, in my uh, experience and the people that I know is full of like ups and downs of like being like, this, I am the worst musician in the world and so no one's going to listen to me. I'm nowhere near as good as this person. And then like other days when I'm just like, I am the greatest singular artist to ever <laughs> exist in the whole world. So um, yeah, I've been through those periods where I felt my music or something I've created wasn't really up to par, up to standard or up to like, even like as good as friends or colleagues or peers or whatever. Um, but they just, they generally go, um, I have this little, what is it? I have this little checklist in one of my notebooks that I keep. Let's see if I can find it. Um, where I was like, uh, it says, Okay, you just, it's this list that says stop self-deprecating. <laughs> and then it says like, and then this is like February 8th. It's like, you're doing well at this, keep it up. And then like March 2nd, you can do better. March 10th, do better. Like March 20th, doing good. April 5th, on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I think some things like that help, um, you know, marginalize the self-hate and whatnot. But definitely, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Giving yourself affirmations can be yeah. very helpful. Definitely. Like, and you d- just do it on a day where you feel good because yeah. you know eventually you're going to be back down yeah. in dumps, yep. and reading those will help. 
Yeah. It's always, this is a really random analogy, but I used to play like NCAA 09 football game. Yeah. And, and there was always like, whenever you'd be really winning, like really like winning very like uh, concretely, like 45 to nine or something, the guy would be like, like this team, when they're having a bad day is going to want to look back on this film to like make themselves feel better. And it's like sort of in line with that, where it's like when you have these really shitty days, you can look back at times when you're like, oh, like that was really good. Like look at, look at how people reacted. Like look, look at this fantastic energy experience and like make, bring that to your current state. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very niche reference right there, but. <laughs> no, I think everybody's going to get that one for sure. <laughs> so uh, I have to ask about probably my favorite song, Sippy Cup at least right now, before the EP's out. Um, it came out September 9th. What was the writing and recording process for that song? Like, where did it start? Um, okay, so it started when I was home for winter break. It must have been like, I don't know exactly when it was, but I know I was in my basement at home where I've written like a, a lot of songs. Like, that was a very nice basement. I had I definitely ex written a number. I wrote Sally Boy also in that basement a little bit, like a part of Sally Boy. Um, and I just like had this guitar riff. And then I had this voice from, from when I was here. And it was just like, tell me, am I way too much for you? Like I had that, that, that uh, hook already written. And so that was here. I had that. And then I went home and I recorded and I got guitar down. And then I came back here. And like, I'd have these songs written for like a long time before I ever demo them. So I just demoed it by myself and then brought it to my friend TJ. Um, and we like produced it out and it sounded fucking sick. And then, I, and then we did like another session or two. And then I brought it to my, my buddy Cole to do guitar, to re-record guitar and vocals. And then me and TJ had like one or two more sessions and done. Um, so sort of all over the place. I mean, starts with me more and more. It starts with like me and then a demo on my computer. And then I bring it to something to elevate it. So it goes through a lot of stages of creation. But it, it certainly stays like the same song and, like if you listen to the original demo that I did, like you'll hear like pretty much everything that's in the in the current. Like we used a lot of what I demoed in the current version. Like that you just wouldn't get like a lot of the more like impressive like production aspects, like sounds and like that whole outro section. The yeah, that was all. That was all things that other people could have added that added on my behalf because I was like, I want this to sound like this, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Help. <laughs> That synth hits, man. I love that. Thank synth. you. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. Uh, was there any moments during all of these uh, stages of creation where you were struggling with, like, you know, I need to keep this from the demo in, or mm. like, you know, somebody wants to add something and you're not so yeah. sure about it? Um, I think I'm really lucky to work with people who we generally have like very much the, the same ideas and it, it comes most of the time. It's, it's more so the fact that I'll be like, what if we add this? And they'll be like, I was literally just about to do that. Or like, I'm like, yo, yo, what if we did? And we're like, dude, like I'm, I'm literally doing that right now. And so, so it's more so that type of experience, but um, something that has, that I have had to work on is when people, people are adding things that I'm like not as sure about, or like they start to do something or they take a certain take or they take a certain sound. I've gotten better, excuse me, at being like, standing my ground and standing what I want to like express myself because obviously it's in a lot of ways you can get stuck in this idea of like not wanting to be like mean or like or like hedge people's creativity especially when they're doing a lot of this stuff for free for you but um I have had to get better at that but most of the time it's better just it's more like we're we're on the same brain like wavelength and it's like hive mind than it is like conflicting concepts yeah and it's good to work with people who you know that if you do you have to tell them like oh that's not it uh and vice versa yeah. if they have to be like dude that snare is awful like then it's good <laughs> to work with people who will who will tell you that and be honest with you because yeah. You, yeah. you should want to make the best product at the end of the day yeah. and uh and it's just good to work with people you trust like that mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> absolutely so for the music video I fucking love the music video, especially the opening shot. Who mm -hmm. came up with the idea to come out of the fridge? Um, I forget. I mean, to be honest, I think it was, it could have been any one of me, John or Eddie. One of us came up, we just like all sat down one day 
in, in, in John's room and like came up with all these different ideas. Um, and uh, one of those ideas, what, like we came up with the entire treatment for the video in like literally just like two hours. Like we were like, we knew what it wanted. Like I knew what it wanted to look like to an extent me and Eddie had talked about it. And then we all just like threw out all these ideas. So it was one of us three. It was the collective conscious that came up with the idea to come up with, come out of the fridge. Um, at this point, I, can't, I don't really remember, unfortunately. Do you remember what the core of what you wanted was before you guys even did the, the two hour treatment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So me and Eddie just sort of had this idea of wanting it to like feel very like, like vibrant and like youthful and like cap encapsulate this energy. That's like a very like minute capsule of like time and like, just like experience and like a small thing, like literally just going to the store with like your friends and, and grabbing something or like going on like, and like, and just like making it like really bizarre and like not like really make not sense, but not really like really keep people, keep people uh, unexpecting or not expecting what's to come next. So it's just basically this idea of like chaos and, and like, like be like Tom Fuller with your friends and like going and like literally just going to the, store with on a bev run because that's what, like we do that all the time where we just like we walk down the street and get drinks from like this local liquor, liquor store so we just wanted to like have it be a family affair yeah that's one thing i love about the music video and one thing i like about just film or any kind of music video in general is when uh the camera like will move slightly and suddenly you're seeing this totally different perspective of something like mm right mm -hmm. after you come out of the fridge like the camera turns and then it turns back and all these kids are going yeah. crazy in your living room like yeah. that's so sick and then yeah. the u-haul and i'm pretty Thank sure you. did i spot uh jake kid hastings in there in the gas station yeah yeah okay i was yeah. like i recognize that long ass blonde hair yeah. anywhere that's so funny <laughs> yeah that must have been so fun yeah it was it was definitely a lot of fun um I've like generally had fun on music video sets, so I've been lucky to have like good friends and and like a uh, crew and family that like just like to have fun on set and like we make fun videos and it was really the first the scene in the U-Haul we actually did that like the the date scene we did that like in the in our backyard and it was just so hot outside and we kept on having to shut the U-Haul so that was like the one thing in that that was really uh uh what's the word unpleasant but everything else was fun. The, the, I love the the, uh, the mosh pit scene. That seems a lot of fun. It's a great way to start it. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Well, that's going to take us over yeah. to the last five. And I'm just going to ask you five quick questions and we'll be out of here. Let's do it. All right. Number one, Logic or Ableton? Okay. I use Logic, but I want to move to Ableton. So I'm currently in Logic, but everyone that I work with uses Ableton or Pro Tools. Okay, so why do you want to move to Ableton? Is there something about it? I just think it, I mean, maybe I'm just biased. Maybe it's like I use Logic and my shit sounds like this. And then like the people that use Ableton, I feel like their shit sounds better, but they may just be better at production than me. So I have this like concept. Maybe it's like when I move to Ableton, my shit will sound like that. But yeah, there's such a, uh, there can be such a learning curve though when you first move over and it's so frustrating. You're like, why can't I just do this really simple thing? I work on like my friend's computer through Ableton, so I know how to use it, just not mm -hmm. like, as well as I know how to use Logic. Yeah, I think it's smart to use both at the same time if you mm -hmm. can, just utilize mm -hmm. best of both worlds. Yeah. All right, question number two, who's your dream artist or producer to work with? See, this one always gets me because I have like a million, I mean. Yeah, you don't. You can name as many as you want, honestly. I'm not that obviously, strict. I love, like Frank was obvious, is obviously someone I would love to work with, although I don't mm -hmm. think I ever like could work with him because I think I would be in too much of like a like shell shock. Shock, yeah. I, w I really want to work with uh, this guy Arthur. He's um, oh, I fucking love Arthur. Yeah, Arthur. He's sick. he's out there. He's so strange. yeah. He's like definitely a genius. Um, I love what he does. I think like the way I would love to work with Arthur is in the same capacity that like what he does with like Joy Again and like with Satchy songs. Like he makes these like like these like general like pop or like like dreamy like indie pop songs and he adds like these like crazy aspects that you would never ever expect mm -hmm. that's what that's what at least i think he does because that would make sense um so i'd love to work with him in that capacity like vegan obviously it's a genius um, is that how you pronounce it i always thought it was like vegan no i think it's vegan i'm pretty sure it's vegan you're probably right i just i didn't know <laughs> yeah i 
I um I don't know. I'm just I'm, I think it's vegan. And then like McGee would be sick. I love what he's been yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked to to Kid Hastings and he also said McGee. Yeah. He said he was his most underrated artist and I totally agreed. I freaked out. I fucking I love think, him. I think he's getting his uh his praise and like he's he's like as a producer, he's getting his fucking like mm-hmm. definitely getting his fucking bucket. Like he just was on the Omar Apollo record like for two songs. Oh, was he? I haven't listened to it yet. That's a great record. I would also be remiss to say remiss if i didn't mention that at some point in my career i definitely want to have a song with john mayer just for like the little kid in me like the little like sixth grader i need to do that i could see it john mayer is a pretty yeah. uh popular popular mention in this podcast pretty like, oh really i would probably say i've done you're my like 27th episode and huh. uh or maybe like 30th and uh there's mm-hmm. gonna be there's probably been like seven people who have mentioned John Mayer so far, which like maybe that doesn't like, sound like a lot, but like I don't all no, no, I don't no, bring up John Mayer, you know. They just all talk about yeah, him. exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think John Mayer is like a little secret. Uh, like everyone loves John Mayer low key, and like he's yeah, even if you don't, don't, don't mention him, mention it. yeah, exactly. And like every single songwriter ever has definitely taken something from john mayer or listen to john mayer and been like yo like that's the dude at some point in their life yeah you're kidding if they yourself. ever played acoustic guitar if they ever played acoustic guitar <laughs> yeah. you have listened to john mayer and been like and taken something from john mayer yeah you tried to play neon and you gave up real quickly <laughs> i learned how to play neon at one point i'll tell you i used to be you much did? better at guitar yeah hell yeah man that's that's not an easy song it's crazy the shit he'll do oh yeah he's he's a genius and when you said frank i totally agree by the way that you should work with frank and the end of Sally Boy makes me really think that when, oh, the vi- when like the violins come in, that oh, kind yeah. of outro section mm-hmm. really was like, oh damn, this is definitely very Frank Ocean. Yeah, that outro was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I would love to. I mean, I would. I don't think I could. I don't think I could do it, but I would love to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Also, I think I would make a good song with Dominic Fike, probably. Yeah, I could see that for sure. All right, uh, question number three: What's on your musical rotation right now? um okay i'm listening to a lot of like classical shit uh, to be honest uh, but i also like uh, listen to like omar apollo a lot um the, my, his i love the song I'm, I'm amazing that shit's amazing um johnny just dropped a new record uh Gla- i'm just looking through my like songs <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh glaive and then like i'd say like fucking dizzy gillespie and jail gilberto there's a lot of people i don't know <laughs> on that list which one should. should i check out like right after i would this? recommend you check out glaive and johnny right now okay johnny, johnny just, just released j-a-w-n-y oh whoa okay <laughs> would have never found that yeah but uh <laughs> that's dope. he, he went, used to go as johnny utah you may know him as that oh wait yeah I yeah do. He, he just changed his name uh because he signed and there's a band called johnny utah in like scandinavia mm-hmm oh damn dude that sucks <laughs> yeah is he the goth guy or is that no no there's a guy literally it's... called johnny goth i think oh really yeah i think so never mind <laughs> but yeah i'll check out glade or glaive glaive yeah glaive. he's he's ridiculous he's 15 years old and like oh and whoa like, yeah and like lives in north carolina and it's just like sick i would also recommend like curtains with a k and like parker P4RKR. Oh, nice. Well, I'll definitely check out Parker. <laughs> yeah. Parker's really fucking tall. Also 15 years old. Oh, what the fuck, man. Yeah. They're like all these Somebody like Somebody with the same like, name as me is like doing way fucking better. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> No, it's just they are just I think they they're sort of like cultivating and curating this like very niche community in like the internet musical world where like they're like just like killing it on like Discord and and yeah. um and just like, like they're like people consider them hyperpop, but like they themselves don't consider themselves hyperpop. They're just making music for fun and like the young having fun with it. So the new generation. Yeah, literally. <laughs> All right. Question number four to you: What is a perfect album front to back? I mean, like Blonde and, and Endless, obviously. That was gonna be my fifth question: Was Channel Orange or Blonde? <laughs> blonde uh but i was gonna say to pimp a butterfly also is like it definitely my my favorite album of all time and just in terms of like pure like genius and and like execution it, it's like the best execution 
of maybe an image of like a vision like I've ever seen ever. It's fantastic and front to back doesn't miss and yeah, that's a great album. There's like a lot of really perfect albums in the world. I'd say like I don't even like depends what you even call it out like some song like seven song eps there's some perfect ones of those like the white album's a perfect album like revolver fucking uh what's your favorite beatles album probably the white album um, really yeah also the point by harry nielsen is a perfect album i love his biggest song but i've never listened to a whole album i recommend listening to the point it's like one of the more interesting like concept pieces that ever listened to in my entire life huh is, is everybody's talking about me is that on it because that's the one uh, i know no it's the, the that one that's a that stuff with something else it's like i don't know if you've heard the song me and my arrow before maybe me and my arrow i think it came on arrow. like on spotify radio or something actually. yeah so that's a, it's a really good album Harry nelson it's like a, it's like a whole like it's a whole story he tells a whole story in between like it's like a song or it's like it's like him narrating song, him narrating song, him narrating song. Oh, weird. Hmm. That's kind of cool. Really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, since my last question was going to be, would you pick blonde or channel orange? And now we know it's blonde and I agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I will ask a different question. Who do you think is the most underrated artist right now? I know that's pretty uh Right specific. now, should I probably say like Sally Boy? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Why not, bro? They're uh, sleeping yeah. on you. Yeah, I think they are. Well, yeah, we'll see after this after this EP. I mean, like, it's probably hard to say I'm the most underrated because I'm just getting started. So maybe I'm not. I'm pretty much, I think I've been rated pretty well so far. Yeah, I mean, um, you've got some great tracks, dude. Like, and thank you. I, tomorrow, like, watch. See, I'll text you tomorrow and it'll be like, you're blowing up. I'm like, all right, perfect. Like, this episode is going to be good to go. That's the goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the goal. Um, But, yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know, I'd probably say... I mean, probably like one of the kids I mentioned earlier, like Curtains is probably a good one to mention. Like he has the same amount of months as I do. And I think his music's like fucking sick. Like he, he's like making some really, really unique stuff. So Curtains, Curtains and Sally Boy. K-U-R-T-A-I-N-S. Nice. I'm going to check them out. All right, yes. man. Sally Boy, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate you sitting down, talking about your process, yeah. talking about uh you know your advice for other musicians bro i appreciate you being on here and i'm excited to listen to the ep tomorrow everybody needs yeah. to check out the eras ep eras ep go check e it out what's your what's your instagram what's your twitter my instagram is sally boy boy that's b-o-y-b-o-i like sally boy boy and then uh and then i think my Insta my my twitter is also the same thing i'm not sure let me check i, I don't know if i sniped the uh sally boy twitter handle yeah same thing sally boy boy boom sally boy boy mm -hmm. all right dude thanks again for coming on of and uh, i'll talk to you soon day and night she's my summertime storm nothing's quite like those legs of hers day and night she's my summertime summertime